Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a little bit of a different setup going on here. I'm just by my window, that's all. Um, but today we are going to talk about my top five pieces of advice when going back to school. These are just five pieces of advice that I've been telling teenagers and young adults that are going to begin the new school year. And with the new school year rolling around here in Florida, at least in the county that I am in, school starts August 10th. So it's very, very soon. We're talking about um, Thursday coming up. So uh, the pressure is really there to, you know, look your best, act your best, and maybe some of you are just not even worried at all. And that's great for you. But I do have my top five tips, um, advice, whatever you want to call it, so you can start off the school year right, whether you're going into high school or in college. The advice that I'm going to give you today has truly come from experience and it has come from times in my life where I have done the complete opposite of it. That's why it, I made this little condensed list. Um, but yeah, I'll, everything that I say comes from experience. Either I did the complete opposite, so I'm advising you, you know, to go the other way or take a different route. But yes, everything came from my personal experience. Advice number one. Be confident in yourself. Whether you're going into high school or continuing high school or going into college, always be confident in yourself. You're the one who sets up your own expectations. You're the one who sets yourself up to fail or to succeed. I say this all the time to teenagers in high school. You are the only one that is keeping yourself from success. So you need to be confident in your abilities and what you can do. And be confident that you are able to learn the things that you need to learn in your classes, to do the work, to do the homework, to be able to do things on your own and independently. You have to start off the year confident. You need to wear that confidence. Um, and I know it's easier said than done, but it's something that you build start you know telling yourself that you can do this that it's not oh just another year with you know these people in my classes and oh you know the school's holding me back that's an excuse that I've heard many many times from teenagers is that the school is holding them back or that the reason why they don't do better is because of their teachers and the school so those parents oftentimes transfer their students school to school to school to school just to find out that that person does not do any better in one school than he he or she did in another school so that then you have to realize that it's not a school problem, it's a you problem. Another thing I always tell uh, teenagers and young adults is that whatever you think of yourself in your mind and in your heart and whatever you confess that you are, that's what you're going to be. If you are constantly confessing failure and you're constantly telling yourself that you're never going to amount to anything, well, I hate to break it to you, but you're never going to amount to anything and you are going to fail because that's something you're, that you're constantly feeding yourself, all those thoughts. So it's so important to feed yourself confidence and positive. Um, confidence and positivity because it, when you do that and you put in the work that it takes to do it, then you're going to reap the benefits of success. Advice number two, be open-minded. And I'm not talking about um, morals or open-minded about your core values. What I mean by being open-minded is being open-minded to everything that you are learning. And even if it's not your favorite subject, just be open to it, open to learn it. Do, you know, do what you can to pass that test, pass that exam. Same thing in college. It may not be the most exciting class, but hey, you pay for it. So you need to try to be open-minded so you can can pass that course and do well. Be open-minded about people as well. Don't just, you know, I I know it's hard to say to not judge a book by its cover, but it's so true. Uh, sometimes your first impression of someone is not the best, but then later on you realize that you had more in common than what you thought. Sometimes even in a high school classroom, the person you don't the person sitting all the way across on the other side of the room, you don't even know who that person is or what they like to do for fun because you were never open to it. You never um, had the opportunity to just mingle and sometimes students go through the entire school year and they don't even know the person's name that's across the room. So 
always be open-minded to meet new people, new friends, and open-minded to the subjects, even if you're not fully interested in it. I know that's hard to say, especially with subjects, um, if you're not good at math or science, or you're not good in English, or you're not good at biology, you know, so it's hard to say, and I've been there, I've done that, I am not a science person, I am not a math person, I am an English person, that's why I majored in that. So yes, English and reading and analyzing, that's what I'm good at, but I always had to be open-minded to the subjects that I wasn't good at as well, especially in college. I let my close-mindedness in high school really tear me apart, and I always got D's and close to F's every single time. And yes, it was true that I didn't understand the concepts, but then I closed myself off so quickly that it actually made me fail more than it helped me. So then when I went to college and had to take these college math classes, I had to learn to be open-minded so I can succeed in those subject areas. Advice number three, the biggest one that I can think of, honestly, um, well no, it's part of the most important ones, is to be prepared and have a plan. So you don't just go into high school or go into college without a plan. And yes, especially for those of you that are a little bit younger, around 14, 15 years old, I'm not talking about a plan for, you know, five, ten years from now about college and your career. You may not know what you want to do yet, but you need to have a plan and be prepared for your classes. It's as simple as bringing paper and pencil to your classes. Like, you have to be prepared. That really does hurt you in the classroom. I'm, if you're in college, I'm, that I'm talking to you on this one that's coming up, is you have to be prepared and you need to bring yourself to class first. And I know in college you're more motivated to take yourself to class because you have paid for it. So you have money on the line and tuition that you've paid for all these classes. So you're a little bit more motivated than someone in high school to actually come prepared because they have to go to school. But still, keep that same mindset. Be prepared. If you're not a good person in time management, it's as simple as opening up your phone and going to the calendar. I can even show you. Um, there are apps, countless apps for notes, for reminders. You could even put things on your calendar here and it will remind you. If you're a little bit more old school like I am, um, I tend to write things down. Get a planner. I, mine is huge. I need it because it is uh, the calendars are uh, the calendars are bigger. Um, the spaces to write in them are a lot longer. So I can write my to do for the week. I can write my goals, things that I need to get done. I'm like I said, I'm very old school that way. I w I like writing things down, but I also put important dates in my phone as well and write them down. There's a little trick to writing things down actually. It's a, there's a scientific background to it. When you force yourself to write down important dates or important ideas, whether you're in class or whether you're taking notes, something like that, if you force yourself to write it down, even if you don't want to, when you do that, you are forcing your brain to put that information in your long-term memory. Sounds crazy, right? But yes, you are basically tricking your brain to remember it for a longer period of time. So then later, if you know you come across uh, something that reminds you of that date, or someone tells you, hey, you remember that one time in class we did this and this, and you kind of think back to it, you're like, oh, wait a minute, yes, I wrote that down. So you are forcing that information to go into your long-term memory when you are writing things down. So it's so important to not just put it in your phone so it can you know, beep and give you a reminder, but it's also important to write things down, have a planner, go out and get one. It's only 10 bucks at Walgreens. That's how much I paid for this one right here, $10. And it's super cute as well. Number four, have goals. Okay, keep yourself growing. Have a growth mindset. Okay, don't stay in your fixed mindset that you can't do this, you can't do that. That's number four. Have 
goals, please. If you're in high school, what is your goal at the end of your freshman year, the middle of your freshman year? What's your goal by next week, by next month? If you're in college, what is your goal by the end of the term, end of the semester, end of your first, second, third year? Obviously, your goals are easier in college because the goal is to get the degree. You're paying all that money. You're getting into student loans. So, oh yeah, your goal is to get that piece of paper that has your name on it, has your bachelor's degree on it, or master's, or doctor, whatever you're going towards, because your goal is a little bit more on a more concrete path. If you're in high school, create your goals. What do you want to get better at? What um, do you need to learn? What skills do you want to learn? Remember, we're li we live in a global technological society where the demands on young adults are higher than 10 years ago once getting out of high school and finishing their high school career. So the demands on you are so hard in this day that you need to have reading, writing, and communication skills. You can tell I talk about this a lot, right? I work with teenagers every single day. so. I, I know what I'm talking about. You need to have goals. And if you're not a person who can think, oh, you know, what am I good at? What am I not good at? You know, give yourself an assessment. Take a, uh, you know, find those quizzes online for like career paths and things like that. So really find your goal and work towards it. Don't overwhelm yourself with goals. I used to do that all the time. I used to overwhelm myself with goals and then never ever finish them out. You need to set short-term goals and long-term ones. No more than a few, okay? So, right, you know, right now I have a few short-term goals. By next year, I want to com be completely debt-free, you know, from school and from my student loans. And that's the goal. It may take a little bit more than a year, but that's my short-term goal. I want to be debt-free. And then my long-term goal would be, you know, a family one day, you know, many, many, many years from now, not right now. So I have goals, advance in my career, you know, so you need to have something to set your mind towards because if you're not doing that, then what are you going towards? It's like you're going nowhere fast. And my last one, number five, have fun. Really, have fun. In high school, my advice to you guys is join clubs, join theater, join a sport, do something fun with your after school time. Yes, it's important to dedicate yourself to your studies and keep yourself focused, but you need to have fun because if not, you're going to drain yourself out so much that by the time you get to college, you're going to be so tired of work, 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 and homework, and reading, and all, everything that you never had a chance to experience what it's like to have fun. Join clubs, meet people in, that you haven't met before. Go to the school dances. Even if you don't have a date, who cares? That's so old school, you don't need to have a date. I've gone to homecoming and prom all on my own with friends, with the exception of prom because I asked my friend to come with me so I, so I wouldn't go by myself, but he was still a friend. We went as friends. So, you know, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Just go have fun, good fun. Don't hang around the wrong people and have illegal fun. Like, no, have good fun. Something that will enlighten yourself, something that will make you feel like, wow, you know, this was a lot of fun. And also, keep yourself surrounded by people who are like-minded. What that means is keep yourself around people who think the way you do, who have common goals, who have common interests, okay? So um, really that's so important. If you're in college, my advice to you is I know that you are working probably part-time, some of you full-time, and you're going to school full-time or part-time, and there's a big load on you. I've been there, I've done that. I've had my part-time jobs. I went to school full-time. I worked all the way till my last year of college because I couldn't work during my internship because it was a full-time job. So 
I understand. I've been there. I've been broke. Uh, I. I have been broke, I've been without money, I um, have been without, you know, putting gas in my car, so I understand that, man, you know, how can I have fun when I have all these problems and all these issues, but even if you don't go out and spend money, maybe hang out with some friends, rent, uh, go to Redbox for like a dollar something and rent a movie and sit down and just relax, unwind with the computer on the side, with your phone on the side, with it, everything, everything that has to do with technology, just don't keep yourself distracted with those things. Take time for you. That was my mistake. My mistake in college was I never took time for myself and then I find myself full of anxiety and I was stressed beyond belief to the point where I found myself crying most of the time and I didn't know why. And especially towards the end of my high, of my college career where I was almost there, almost done, I had six months left and I broke down in tears because of how overwhelming it was. And uh, my husband, who was then my fiance, we were engaged, um, he had, he was the one that said, you know what, let's, I'll take you bowling, let's go bowling, you know, let's do this, you know, let's get yourself to unwind and that is so so important all right guys so those are my top five pieces of advice for anyone who's in high school or college going back to school I hope you enjoyed it I hope that this helped you and that you can start the school year just confident successful open-minded that you have goals you plan and plan out to have fun as well so I hope you enjoyed it I know this is very different the setting is different the topic is different but don't worry we'll be getting right back into makeup tutorials very soon um, actually the next upload will be a makeup tutorial so I'll keep you posted on that but until then I hope you enjoyed this video subscribe please please do not forget to subscribe if you haven't already give this video a thumbs up Please share with all your friends and don't forget to follow me on all my social media. I'll put it somewhere around here. I don't know, somewhere here in the bottom, all my social media. And I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.